Keyframes are one of the best tools to make your video smoother and more engaging. In this video, I'm covering the ultimate keyframe mastery guide. If you're an editing noob, don't worry. By the end, you'll be keyframing like a pro. So, grab some popcorn and let's get started. What are keyframes? Keyframes are points on your timeline that mark changes in an object's properties, like position, size, rotation, or opacity, creating smooth animations from start to end. Didn't understand? Let's see how it works. I go to CapCut and add my clip to the timeline. First, let's create a zoom-in effect. There are two variations of the zoom-in effect, slow zoom-in and dramatic zoom-in. For the slow zoom-in, I select my clip, and you can see diamond-shaped icons. I click on the top one, which is the transform keyframe, and it gets added to the clip. Next, I go to the end of the clip and increase the scale of the video. When I change the clip size, a keyframe is automatically added. Now, when I play it back, the clip zooms in smoothly and slowly. For the dramatic zoom in, the key is keyframe distance. If keyframes are placed far apart, the motion is slow. If keyframes are placed closer together, the motion is fast. To create a dramatic zoom effect, I add keyframes closer together, making the zoom effect quicker and more impactful. You can also adjust the keyframe distance by dragging them on the timeline to control the motion speed. The next and most important part of keyframes is keyframe animation, which controls how motion flows between keyframes. There are three main categories, in, out, and ease. First, in animation starts slow and speed up toward the end, creating a smooth acceleration. CapCut offers three variations, ease in, which gradually picks up speed, quad in, which starts even slower but builds momentum smoothly, and cubic in, which begins begins very slow and then accelerates more aggressively. Next, out animations work in reverse. They start fast and slow down toward the end, giving a softer stop. CapCut provides ease out, quad out, and cubic out, each controlling how gradually the motion slows down. Finally, ease animations create the smoothest flow by combining both effects, starting slow, speeding up in the middle, and gently slowing down at the end. Cap cut includes ease, quad ease, cubic ease, and circular ease for fluid movement. You might also see rebound in and rebound out, which add a slight bounce effect for extra impact, but they're not essential for basic animations. Now, let's see these animations in action. I start by dropping a car clip onto the timeline and setting the ratio to 16 to 9. I resize the car and position it on the left side of the screen. Now, let's animate it. I add a transform keyframe right at the beginning. Then, I jump to about the 3 second frame. You can track frames right here and drag the car to the right side. Hit play and there it goes, moving smoothly across the screen at a steady pace. But wait, we can make this even cooler. I right click the clip and select Show Keyframe Animation. A whole menu pops up like a MCQ. This time, I click on X to reveal the graph editor. I select both keyframes by dragging over them and then click this tiny box to open up the animation presets. The same in, out, and ease options we talked about earlier. I pick one and boom. The graph shifts automatically and Bezier handles appear like magic. These handles let me bend the motion however I want, giving me full control to craft a custom animation curve. Pretty awesome, right? This is just the beginning. Keyframes can do way more. Let's dive into our second effect. I add a clip to my timeline to create a color shift effect. Then, I go to the adjustment section and scroll down just a bit until I find the adjust keyframe. I place one at the start of my clip and then move to the end. Now, I apply some color grading by tweaking settings like temperature, tint, and saturation. I also adjust the lightness settings. When I play it back, you can see the colors shift smoothly from start to finish. Next, let's try color shifting on text. I start by customizing the text with a font, stroke, and shadow. You'll see the color option right here, and next to it is the color keyframe icon. I add a keyframe at the start of the text and go to the end, then change the text color. Simple as that. Now you can see the color of the text shifts smoothly too. Let's move on to our last keyframe effect this bouncing animation. First, I import a ball clip into my timeline and add a dark background for better focus on the animation. I adjust the ball's size, go to the one second mark, and add a transform keyframe. I drag the ball down to the bottom edge of the preview box. Next, I go to the beginning of the clip and drag the ball up until it's no longer visible in the preview. Now, the ball falls down at a constant speed. To fix that, I open the keyframe graph for the y-axis. I select the first keyframe, and this time, we'll make a custom graph. I click this little button to activate the Bezier handle and drag it to the right. This creates a smoother downward curve. Now, 
Let's create the bounce. I go to the second keyframe and move 20 frames forward, then add another keyframe. I repeat this four more times. Every 20 frames, I add a keyframe. Now, I select the second keyframe again and click the button to activate the handles. I drag the left handle all the way in until it's not visible and adjust the right handle to create a smooth curve. The left handle needs to stay hidden to avoid weird motion. Then I select the third keyframe, hide the left handle again, and adjust the right one to create a smaller bounce curve than the first one. I repeat this for the remaining keyframes, making each bounce curve smaller than the last. And here's our final result. And that's it. You've just unlocked the magic of keyframes, smooth zooms, slick color shifts, and bouncy moves like a pro. If this video helped you out, hit those buttons down below and check out the channel for more editing tips and tricks. See you in the next one.